Right, now, painty painty time. So I'm gonna paint this whole inner wing area. Um, at the moment, I'm just masking the engine up and just trying to keep things a bit tidy. I'm gonna paint it with chassis paint. This is uh, an epoxy one-to-one -one, um, uh, renovation paint. Comes in black. Um, quite happy with this stuff, I've used it before. Uh, you just need to prep the surface, make sure it's uh, grease free. Um, normally I'd use panel white, but a uh, customer had a couple of cans of this. Actually quite impressed with it, but <laughs> it's fucking dangerous stuff, I tell you. You, uh, you don't want to be breathing this shit, you really don't. So, yeah, appropriate face mask when you're using that. Um, and I always use appropriate face mask when I am painting anyway. Um, <clears throat> if you go to rust.co.uk, you'll see this product. Um, but I have worked really, really well with it in the past. Um, oh, that's a shame. Time lapse didn't work. Um, right. Now... This paint went on quite nicely. It's quite thick. I had to put it on quite high pressure. It is orange peely, um, but it's also um, very, very, very thick. And it's a chassis paint. So it's gone on really nicely. I'm quite pleased with, with the way it's gone on. Once, it's, um, once it's, it's gone off, probably in a day or two's time, I could potentially flat it back lightly. And we'll see. Um, I think it's actually levelling out, though, all the time. So all of these headlight boxes and everything all under the radiator, nice satin finish, headlight box, it's all looking good isn't it? So, and the other thing is, um, I didn't really need to uh, even mask the engine up because it comes out of the gun like porridge, so I've got the narrowest fan I can possibly get on the paint gun, it's a 2mm um, tip on the paint gun, it's um, a gravity fed gun. And uh, the pressure's turned right up, we're, we're at about 75 psi. <laughs> Um, which I was a bit nervous about because sometimes these guns they're just not designed to take that that level of um, pressure but it's gone on and it looks a lot tidier now uh, this 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 top here it is one 1993 loom complete this is where it starts that's the bit that goes onto the battery so we're going to need to unravel this find out what we've got and to confirm it's going to fit. Lots of bits I'm recognising. There's quite a lot to it, isn't there? Woohoo! Oh, yes. Right, so Mr. Cutty McCutface has been busy today. Um, we've cut the remains of the side panel off, apart from that very bottom bit down there, which is solid. Um, salvaged a little bit of this. Savaged a little bit, I should say. And then the idea is, on the majority of this, I'm going to weld it on the outside so that you can't see anything from the inside it will all look nice and pretty and then just the last tiny little bit down here it's probably gonna end up getting welded also on the outside but there's gonna be a lip on the inside um but <sighs> trouble is if i well i suppose i could cut the lip off completely couldn't i if i cut that lip off completely then yes i could i could weld it on the outside and that'll make life a lot tidier then um but yeah, that's a piece of piss, that. Put that on, weld it, seam it along there, or tag it along the outside there. It doesn't need to be seamed, um, but it will need to be solid and robust. Um, and then, once that's in, I can then work on the clever bit, which is this bit, which goes along the top. Box section. Right. So let's crack on with that, and then I can get this side painted then, you see. Um, there's lots of gloop and shit up here. Probably just scrape this all off before I uh, start welding. But uh, yeah, it was, although it might have seemed drastic, cutting this whole fucking thing off, of what is supposed to be a solid in a wing. Most of what I've cut off has been in a pretty dreadful state. This is sand and mud, that's a lot. Um, it has been in a pretty dreadful state, and it's not been beautiful, and um, yeah, we could have patched it up, and it could have lasted another few years, um, and then we could have ended up uh, replacing inner wings, or we could do it like this, and I think the inner wings are going to last a decade, because the rest of them is solid. Um, and it's the inner wing that took out the bulkhead side, I think, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, lots of filler. Lots of feather. Right, I'm gonna take off that little edge there, take off that lip so I can weld this on the outside. That should be easy enough to do. 
That'll do it. Right, so weld that into place now. Um, the only minor issue is since I cut that fucking lip off down there, I cut this thing too short. So this is going to have to sit two or three mil lower than that, which I don't see as a huge issue. It gives me something to weld it onto as well. Um, and lucky I left that piece up there because it gives me something nice to line up to. But also you can see on the inside there where I managed to cut out on the inside um, to, to, to work out exactly where um, all of the gloopy shit was. Um, that's all nicely cleaned up and ready to weld really. The only bit that's not cleaned up to weld is this edge down here, which I'm just going to go over with the, uh, with the sanding wheel. Um, and I should weld on. Get it on. And then I can paint this side then. Um, yeah, I mean, I know this rail lines up at that end, but I also know that at the front end, it needs to be level with that corner on the top there, which is exactly the same as this side. Okay, and well, I've measured, blah, 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 measured, 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 measured. And it's all happy. Um, so that's a shitload easier than fucking welding in little fillets and bollocks like that. It's fucking ridiculous. Um, right, weld, paint. Right, that's all welded on. Um, I've only kind of tag welded it because it would have been spot welded originally and it ain't going no place. So the only place I've done a bit more welding is down there on the bottom. Uh, but the rest of this is really just tag welded into place. So I'm going to clean these welds up on the top here and along the bottom. I'm going to paint it and then I'm going to seam seal it and I'm going to paint it over the top again. Um, because this edge especially is prone to rot because water comes out of the bulkhead, dribbles down, sits in between that gap there, which I've tried to get as tight as I can. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's good. Right, the other thing I'm going to have to do is just slice the front end of this rail off, um, because otherwise the outer wing won't fit, I don't think. But I'll give it a go first of all. In fact, there's the outer wing there. Except the fucking thing fits, doesn't I? Yes, it does, but I do need to take this front corner off, which is why it's um, um, chamfered on the other side, so that's easy enough with the angle grinder. The rest of it lines up fine. Uh, bearing in mind, I've got to put the bracket on the inside here, which supports the wing. Right height. Yeah, that'll work. Happy enough with that. Let's get on with this. So what time is it now? It is. Oh, of course, of course, to 11. So that's not bad, Tim. A couple of hours to get that done in total. Um, took me a lot longer than two hours to do that side, so it was the answer. Um, uh, so paint, seam seal, inside and out, um, and then we can start assembling this side. Woohoo! Um, turn the radio for a second because I need to have a serious conversation with you about your turbo, sir. Right, radio's down. Turbo. Yes. So I had to take all the. Um, inlet air inlet pipes and stuff off but I protect the outside of the turbo with a glove and I'm going to replace that. First of all you really shouldn't have shitloads of oil and stuff on your turbo inlet um, and secondly when I get hold of the end of the vein and you can see the vein in there so the nut in the middle of the circle turn the light on. Looking at the turbo vein itself in the middle I can hold with one hand and wiggle it's got play in it. So I can feel, if you see the gap at the bottom, on this bottom vein down here, you can see that opening and closing. Turbo's fucked, mate. It's not good. Um, I'm replacing that thing spins at tens of thousands of RPM and it's not gonna tolerate a worn out bearing. So we'll have a chat about that, but uh, yeah, turbo's not great. Um, however, this is well chuffed with this. This paintwork has set settled down quite nicely. A bit dusty at the moment because I've been doing all manner of uh, grindy, grindy, grindy and stuff. Yes. Right, I'm going to go and have a cup of coffee, I think, now we've done that. And then I'm going to mix up the paint, clean up all this interior, this inner wing, get this inner wing painted. So you can see the weather is most inclement today. Shite, I think it's otherwise known as. Um, I'm gonna paint up around the bulkhead as well, which is the other reason for taking these um, these bulkhead, what's its names, brake lines out, so I can actually paint right up to the top. Probably end up <sighs> But yeah, so we've not even got on to the 
rear looms yet. So the rear looms all dangling from the ceiling here like some sort of macabre spider's web of horror. Um, floor pans are drying nicely. I managed to just scuff that piece there on the rear heel board, but that's not going to be a problem. I'll just paint over it again tomorrow. Um, my, what, the insides of the door's painting black as well, Tim. I don't know. I have a, I'd probably need to ask you, do you want the trims putting back on the doors again? I'd imagine you would. Oh, that door closes nicely. Look at that gap. I'm not playing with that one, that's why. That's why the gap's good. Um, right, so, seven o'clock. I've had enough. It's been a good day. I've got a shitload of stuff done. That whole inner wing now is finished. Everything's painted. And I've been through and um, prepped the loom for installation tomorrow morning. That's all there. And once I get this loom off the bench... Then I can get the cylinder heads off the blue car, which is pat patiently waiting at the rear there, for its cylinder heads to be stripped down so they can go to the machine shop. It's easy. It's easy to get confused. My new little torch, by the way, I like this. I've been keeping a kind of greasy hands off it, what's a bit dusty at the moment, but it's it's the bollocks, it really is. Tenor. I like my new torch. Uh, the only thing that's happened is I've lost my um, uh, butt connector crimp. But no. um, it's disappeared. I will find it. I would have put it away in a box and thought, that's a sensible place to put it, and then not been able to bloody find it since because I couldn't remember that I put it in the box that was the sensible place to put it. Headlight connector um, crimps. Because when you come to change a bulb on the headlight, it's a pain in the ass when you've just got, just got three blue crimped on spades um, and you've got no idea how that um, actually attaches to the headlight. And while we're talking about headlights, I don't know what the fuck has been going on with these bulbs. I mean, look at the... There should be one fixed point on the bowl. That's it there, isn't it? But someone's sort of cut. Oh. I might just get you another pair of bowls, Tim, just to make life easy. Because I could probably get these headlights lined up. But it might take me three hours. With some decent headlight bowls where you fix the headlight in one position. It's possible that... Yes, it would be, because um, the headlight bowls will be uh, directional, left or right-hand drive. So these have come in from a left-hand drive car. So your chap who MOT'd it last time has cut off the fixed point for left-hand drive. And then... <sighs> right, organising this loom to go in. So getting the basic components roughly in the right sort of place. We've got the parts that need to go up to the steering column and the dashboard just wedged up there. We've got all of these bits which need to bolt on to the underside of the steering column support. We've got all the relays which go on the driver's side panel um, and the various door and rear loom connectors there. I've tucked all the rear looms out of the way at the back there. I've pulled the driver's side loom through the side of the bulkhead and that's kind of just sitting there waiting. Before I do this side, uh, so this, here's, the, here's the, um, the, the near side loom. A big chunk of all of this lot needs to go through the bulkhead side up here, that, that little round hole there. Um, and then the rest of it really needs to then suspend on the bulkhead. Um, and I've got all the centre console stuff, blah, 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 just wedged down the middle here. So yeah. We're moving forwards. Door loops are on their way. This paint's come up quite nicely. I've been fiddling around with lights and indicators and stuff, and the problem I've got is that all of these things have got the wrong bloody connector on them, if they've got any connector at all. Now, you can actually just buy uh, the internal loom part, or I could just use bullets. I don't know. I'm working on that at the moment. I need to do an assessment on all of the lights, because all of the lights that I've got are for the earlier loom connections. And now I've got a later loom. 
I still need also to work out what I'm going to do about the immobiliser in the loom. Because um, there will be an immobiliser in the loom. Because this is a 1992-93 loom. Um, so I'm going to work that out and suss out what I'm going to do there. Um, but it is starting to come together. I need to put a connector onto that and then that connects onto that. So these two, so that's obviously goes to the starter motor. That goes to the rest of the car. So the, um, the it's isolated pin is no longer um, relevant for this, 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 this particular loom. Yes. It's all fun and games. Bloody cold today. Right, so that's the loom basically in place now. Um, I found something else that's different, left-hand drive to right-hand drive cars. Um, the blanking plate, which was over here, needs to go over there. They're different, left-hand drive to right-hand drive. Would you fucking believe it? So, this is the bastard. Now, basically, that wants to go onto the car that way round. Or that way round. It was on that way round, here. Like that, okay? So I put it on that way round over here. And the bolt holes don't line up. Because it's upside down. You put it the right way up, and the loom won't reach to these holes. What a balls ache. Never mind. Um, right, okay, so I need to get one of those from Tim. Um, the other thing I'm missing is there's a dash support piece, which goes on the corner of the dash. Now, obviously, because I've got the steering column brace in place now, that supports this corner of the dash. I've got nothing supporting that corner of the dash. There is a brace that goes underneath it. Um, if I can get hold of one of those, I will. It's not desperately urgent, but I guess that it's there for a reason. I mean, Land Rover didn't add weight to their cars for no good reason. <laughs> um, yes, so, I mean, that's also bent as well for some reason. Um, but yeah, I need one of those. Right, it's lunchtime. I got a little bit distracted. Um, so basically, put in the, um, the bulkhead uh, brake looms and beautified this side, got all that all connected up. That's happy with that. And then went nuts! putting acne on the inner wings, so filling all the little holes up, or most of the little holes, where I had grommets big enough. So the majority of the, the, the holes there are now filled up. Just Land Rover just drilled so many fucking holes in these things. Um, <laughs> that's been pretty much it for this morning. So, got the, got the loom placed on the bulkhead, fed it through the bulkhead sides on both sides, got the loom into the right locations, um, identified a couple of minor issues with the loom, got everything fed up there. Um, one body loom's fed in, that way from the front, see it going to the A post over there. Just doing the other one now, so I've had to take the other rear light unit out. Um, there's actually not that much bodery on this, uh, on this loom. Um, it's in rather good shape, um, but all completely wrong fucking connectors. So, it comes off. Um, it's a bit of a balls ache, but... Uh, the other thing I noticed here, while well, I had the boot open, that is completely fractured there. So there's another little welding job for me to do. It's fractured around the edge of the weld. I don't know if you can see that, you can see it now. Um, easy enough to fix though. Get in here with a tickly stick. Um, just make sure there's no wiring or anything nearby. But that's just a quick flash, that one. Um, Yes, no, no, neither of these uh, heated rear window cables was attached by the way, I can't even find the wires for it and it looks like the um, rear wiper is fucked as well, um, I'll have to test it but uh, it's never good when they don't come with a bloody cover on them, there should be grease and stuff in there, I'll have a look, if I can't get it working easily I shall just remove and uh, we shall consult but I mean these things they do need a rear wash wipe because you just when you're driving down the road you just drag a world of crap behind you on the road and it all hits the back window so unless you've got any particular desire to have not seen where you've been and i can understand that um then i would be inclined to uh have it working um, that's it all in so you tuck the back part of the headlining up this headlining doesn't stink unlike the mat that came off the boot, that is revolting. I know exactly what you mean now. I'm going to take this um, sound deadening out of the boot floor as well because that just looks disgusting. Um, 
on the carpet of the wheel arches and it'll give me a good indication then if, um, if there's any welding needs at the back end but at the moment this loom is now in front to back just needs all connecting up and that is what are we 25 plus 5 so that's not been a bad day so far um i think i might get the heater in next just so i can get that bolted up um i put a new pipe in for the uh, rear wash wipe but as i mentioned i think the rear wipe is fucked we'll see all right put the wing support panels on and the wings on uh, they're sticking out of the bottom because i hadn't i've got to paint these fuckers um, so when they're dry i'll put them on the looms through here looms going to be through there in a minute this wings on and then i was um putting the door loom in on this side um so door loom's gone through there he is all connected um and then i managed to get the mirror through mirror loom through by threading a really long cable tie down there and attaching it onto the end there you go um so that's that there's a whole load of extra wiring in here god knows what that one does um speaker wires um central locking wires that one might be central locking actually um not needed for this car um so i'll just tuck them out of the way in case anyone ever wants to retrofit central locking there's the wiring it's all there um and another one there i don't know what that does i think that's probably light because they have lights on these things it's quite possible that's a light um perhaps you want a light in the bottom of your door tim i don't know anyway it's there um Right, so now I can get this, um, this this window frame bolted in. Now I've done that, and I know I don't need to take the bloody thing out again. Uh, I've just got to find the fixings now. Where did I put them? They won't be far. They will not be far. Um, <clears throat> I'm struggling to do the driver's door because where I parked the car, I can't get the door right open because my parts washing tank's in the way. Um, so I can't really get into there. I could probably get the door loom through. But I'm not going to be able to get the screws into the end of the wing. Um, which is a pain in the ass. But never mind, these things happen. Right, fitting this um, this door brackets in. Um, and I figured why now. Um, there was just things wedged in there. Um, and that's because these are uh, UNF captive nuts on here. So Manuel, I'm guessing, rather than do it properly, decided to just hammer metric bolts through. I've managed to recover the thread and I can do this one. I'm going to take that one out again um, and do that. I'm surprised actually these are uh, UNF and not metric. I would have thought they'd be metric um, but I don't know the age of this door. I don't know where these parts have come from. Uh, maybe this is just a hangover that Land Rover made about six billion of these things <coughs> um, in 1970 um, and just kept picking them out of the parts bin. And they're probably about the only thing on this car that's um, that's uh, imperial, rather than metric. Anyway, thought you'd be interested to find that out. Or maybe you're not interested, I don't know. But anyway, we're going to put this door together. You can see all the looms all in. I've tucked all the bits that we're not going to need up to the hinge edge of the door, so nothing's going to catch on the window when it goes up and down. And I'm going to put the mirror on. Woohoo! Getting these indicators sorted out. Um, if you find yourself with a combination of connectors, new and old, blah, 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 um, and you can't be asked to work it all out, first of all, <clears throat> just double check whether there's spade connectors in there. This one's got spade connectors, but it wouldn't have helped me past the connector issue. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I will crimp on bullets. Now, these little chaps are bullets. You can solder them on or you can crimp them on. These are the crimp variety. Um, and the idea is you then push them into a connector, be it a double, that's a double, or a single, single, one cable to one cable, four cables. Um, so that would be quite useful for things like a, an earth connector and so forth, because you can put four earths into one. Um, <clears throat> right, obviously we can then um, put a big giant shrink wrap. These, these are used ones, by the way. These are the other ones I could find at the time, but I have got new ones. I wouldn't generally reuse these things because they get quite scrappy inside you can see that one there so give it nasty inside right so what do we do well first of all you buy yourself a nice crimp tool just get these things i, mean, I, I go to um 
I'll post the link on the text underneath this. I can't remember the exact name of the company, but I will. Vehicle wiring products. There you go. Vehicle wiring products. I'll post the URL. Um, but these these tools, they just make uh, the job very, very, very easy. So where do you start? You start by chopping off the old connector and then stripping back the wire. Um, and I'm going to strip back about a centimetre of this wire. OK. And again, a decent crimp tool makes the job easy without taking loads of time, like a bloody knife would. Right. <clears throat> Next thing you need to do is to choose the right size bullet. These ones are 1mm, one 1mm mil, one mil cable. These ones are 0.5, and I've got some 2mm cable. This is very clearly not 2mm. So this is somewhere between the 0.5 and the 1. So I shall literally just make sure that I get the whole bullet over the whole cable, and that slips on like a dick in a bucket. And then we'll just position that on there and crimp. That is it. That's all you have to do. How easy are crimp bullets? And this is getting around the um, the issue I've got with the uh, with the car, whereby the indicator units that we've got are all with an early type type connector, and the loom that I've bought is a later type. It took me longer to actually put the camera on the tripod than it's taken me to get this all set up. Now all I need to do is plug that onto the loom via three of these fellows, which I'm going to dig out in a second, um, and that is then done. That is connected onto the loom. That's about as easy as falling down the stairs, isn't it? Uh, and these things, you get, there we are, vehicleWiringProducts.co.uk. That's where I get them from. Really nice guys. They do an awful lot of um, uh, electrical products. You get all the crimp tools and everything from them. This came from them. I've actually written bullet on it. I should put another T on there, shouldn't I? I'll call it Steve. <clears throat> Some of you guys will actually understand that reference. If you don't, ask your dad or your mum. In these modern times, you never know. Mum might like bullet too. I might have to edit that out. That might have been a bit sexist. Ah, fuck it. It's not sexist. My missus wouldn't watch Bullet. She'd look at me like I was insane. What, really? You want me to watch this? It's the sort of film a bloke watches naked eating steak. Right, so that's that done. Um, I will... Um, I need to put another bulb in these because um, the bulb was broken. The bulb wasn't broken. I broke the bulb. So I'll provide a 5 watt bayonet bulb. That one's actually looking a bit on the tired side. Don't know. <clears throat> and then I can then connect this indicator unit up. Marvellous. Thank you for watching.